Hi guys, it's me Karen and welcome back to my channel. Today we've come to do part two of this page here. Part one we did the woodwork and the only thing I didn't show was doing this little shelf um, here, which I did in the same colors except for I did not use watercolor in the background. I just colored it with the uh, pencils that I had out. So it's um, the light yellow ochre, the raw umber, and the walnut brown. And I just colored it in that way. And then in the back of the shelves, I just darkened the lower section and did it light on the top. Except for I left some shadows up here for the uh, little ornate piece that's in the front of that. Then I colored it all the way down to this area here, put a little wood texture in, and then colored up the little place down here. Now this portion I'm not sure what I want to do with. It looks like a woven pattern, so it could be like, um, you know, like a basket looks on the front, or it could be like a wire netting down there that they would put their pies in to cool down. So I'm not quite sure what I was going to do with that. But we got all the woodwork done and I had forgot about the beams that were up here. I noticed those when I was coloring, so I just went ahead and did those um, off camera also. So we have two beams <laughs> that I didn't do and this portion, we did all the fruit and um, the other pots, pans and tables, chairs, stools, buckets and stuff on part one. I have to finish the little um, berries down here and I was going to make them blackberries uh, so they're going to be kind of a dark with some blue in them along with the purple that I put in. So we'll just bring in some dark indigo here and kind of accent the little berry parts. They're just kind of like little rounds and some of them are kind of um, not drawn in that way, but we're just going to pretend and darken them up. There we go. Now, I was um, in the comments. <laughs> I had a few comments saying that the fruit could be other uh, types of fruits, so I thought I would Go ahead and let you know that in case you wanted to color your fruit in differently than I did. And when I do these um, videos, I do them because people ask me how I colored that page. So when I'm coloring, <laughs> this is how I color them. You do not need to follow <laughs> what I do. I mean, you can if you want to, but it's not required. <laughs> so if you want to color your fruit a different color or a different type, you know, go for it. Have fun with your page. That's all I ask. So they had mentioned that um, one of these fruits that I did, I'm assuming it's these, could be pomegranates. And someone said something else could be a persimmon. Um, our pomegranates that we get up here in the grocery store, I live in the Pacific Northwest, United States, are, are rather large. They're about as big as an apple, if not sometimes bigger than an apple. So when I was looking at my fruit and being so I wonder what that is. Mode. <laughs> um, they still look like blueberries to me because of the size compared to the other fruit. Blackberry, blackberry, blackberry. Should have a tiny bit of a deep red in it or a deep purple red. What do we have? We have some magenta here. I'm going to add in there. Just a touch. Anyway, I was just um, looking at the size of the fruit compared to the mice. 
and then again I use what I have in my backyard kind of for well, that's a loud car <laughs> kind of for my um, ideas of what go in the pictures which I'm sure a lot of you do too when you have an abundance of a type of fruit in your neck of the woods you probably will use that also okay we're going to use just a little bit of the white prisma here to go in the berries to give them a little glow on one side okay But by all means, if you, if you think um, they should be a different berry or a different fruit, go for it. And I'd love to see your pictures if you want to uh, hashtag me if you put them on Instagram. It'd be fun to see. And all our pictures are different, so. Got some berries. Now. The floor looks to me like stone, and I'm going to kind of do it in a gray, like slate type stone, which actually is gray, blue, green, you know, a whole bunch of colors. <laughs> I think I'll do that kind of later. I got to put water in here, so we might as well put some water in. Let's see, a light color blue. What did I grab? The light cobalt blue. And we're just going to pit a light coat of that in and around the bucket, kind of on the edge. Very light towards the middle. And if I get it all over the towel, it's okay. Okay. We're going to throw some of the Prisma white in there. There we go. And then we're going to darken the edge. I have to get a blue for that. How about some Persian blue? Where these little ringlets come out and on the sides. And just like the bucket, it's going to be darker like on this side and lighter over here. So you can make it really dark over here in the shadow area. And then just bring it out light. Go back in with the turquoise. Blend it. And leave it nice and light in the center. Bring in the white again and just make sure those get blended in the ringlet parts. There. Okay, water done. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Okay, this part here that holds the bucket together could either be wood or it could be a metal band. And I think we're going to make it a metal band, so I'm going to get out some gray. Uh, two grays. And the black. So we have doo -doo, a cool gray one. Oh, I'm not cold gray. Most of them are cool gray, but this one's cold gray. 
and then the uh, cold gray and it's one before the V so that's four <laughs> Roman numerals and black okay so this is the lightest color so we're gonna go in and put that down first I think I'll make the handle wood I guess it could be metal too Oh, we'll make it metal. Why not? Then we'll go in with the darker of the grays. Put a shadow in there. Okay, then the black same place where we put the shadows just lightly put in a little more with the black and then we'll go back in with the lightest gray And there we have a nice little handle and a ring. <laughs> Gotta come up with what it's called, right? Okay. Well, what I'm going to do is take the gray and we're just going to go on along the floor here. Just to darken the whole thing. Base color. Still think our little girl here wants to help somebody do something. I'm trying to think of what I can do for her. So at least if I block out some of this gray flooring, <laughs> I won't accidentally color it in a some uh, something else. It's got some color on it. It's shirt, it's tail, leaf. Just don't run into the leaves. it for the floor, right? Okay. I think that's it. Well, over here. Okay. Now what we're going to do with the floor is the second color here, we're going to kind of shadow the bottom portion and up one side. And if we need to shadow underneath our little mousies, we will do that. Mousies, I guess that's mice. I'm just going to soften the look of these and it goes all the way up so make that like a jar of jam 
It's going to take a long time. I'm going to do this little portion right under her and then we'll do the rest of that off camera. I could spend all day doing this part. Okay, so I've got that started. I'm going to take the black in. I'm really hoping I'm in camera doing all this. I'm going to darken up this area here. Down in here. And then like in here, this is going to be a deep crack. So we can darken that up. If you want, you can curve these a little more. You can put in a little lines. You don't have to. But Slate has these little lines in it. And then we will put in a couple of colors to go in there. I like to use the green gold. I remember that the mice are out in the woods. <laughs> they might get a little moss on their rocks, especially around the water bucket. So we're going to add a little of that color in there. Just here and there. Not a whole lot, just a touch. We're going to add earth green. Okay, then we're going to go back over it with our lightest gray. And if we need it any darker, go back over it with the darker gray. There's a portion here. <laughs> okay. 
If you want to, you can throw in a little of the white just in the front. Let it get darker towards the back. And that's how we're going to do the floor. All those colors blended in together. some little lines. Like I said, you can go crazy with it or you can just shadow it like that. Anyway, we'll finish those off camera and we'll have a nice little floor going. Got the water down. Let's show you how we're going to do the pie top. Let's see. Dark Naples yellow. Go on the top of these. Then we'll go in with the hmm, burnt ochre. Okay, and this is in a pattern. So, this is the fold under. And keep that kind of in mind. It's kind of lattice work on a pie. <laughs> Bister in there. Um, B I S T R E, Bister. <laughs> Just going to shadow this bottom portion because it's kind of tucked into the crest that goes on the outside. And because when you make a pie, you kind of pinch it, you want some spots that look like they're raised. Then we're just going to lightly go over everything here. Leaving this portion because of that window a little lighter and this side a little darker. Just lightly top those and we'll bring back in our, well we will bring in the light yellow ochre here to lighten those up a little bit on the crust and just kind of touch everything here. Okay, 
Now if you wanted this a blueberry, you could actually add a little tiny bit of some color in here because the pie will weep a little bit. If you wanted it to look like a pie, you could do, you know, baked pie, you could do that. I'm leaving the pie bottom for later. I will think about putting some ooh in there if it's a baked pie. And now what do we want to do? Kind of leaving the mice till later, but <laughs> I guess we could work on these leaves. So I'm going to turn the paper upside down to work on those so I don't have to reach across to everything we just did. We want a dark color and a lighter color. Um, let's see. The pine green. Yep. And we'll use the uh, earth green we used. So we'll bring up some of that floor color up here. So we're going to do these uh, leaves here. And I'm going to, since they have, all of them have that pattern on them, we're going to take uh, one of these and make it dark and then go across and make this one dark and go across and make this one dark. So we're going to start off dark, which means just putting a lot of pressure there and then just lightly bringing it up. Okay. And then we'll take the, what is this one called again? Earth green. And on the opposite ones, we'll put that in there. Okay. I'll get this one sharper. They both need to be sharpened for this. So they're tiny little leaves. There we go. Um, my favorite sharpener. It says uh, Doll 133. It brings this out, all my fatter pencils or thinner pencils will fit into that little hole and it holds it and then you just crank it. On the back here it has an adjuster to um, make a longer or shorter point on your pencil. Just awesome too. So now that we have these sharp, I'll go back in here and just Deepen that one up a little bit. And then our light leaves, our light portions. And I think that'll look really cute going across the top. So each, oh, I missed a berry. Each one of those will be done that way. So I'll do a couple for you. <laughs> I'm not going to make you sit and watch the whole thing. There's a lot of leaves here. going across the top. Do just a couple more here. All those, just think of them done. And think of that berry done too. 
We're going to bring um, these colors down here into this uh, flower arrangement. We'll put the light color on the tips. Let me see if I can get the eraser in there. Remember, I colored over that <laughs> with the brown, so we're just going to add the light color in here. On all of those leaves, and hope we got them all. <laughs> I know I've probably missed some and then just a darker color at the base. leaves. Looks like I did. <laughs> okay. So we'll have that green up here and here, and we're going to pull it It's going to come onto this side, so we'll pull it over here into these leaves. Doing the same thing we did up the top. <laughs> Hopefully it's part of the pair. If it wasn't, it's going to be. Okay, I can do this one too. Again with the earth green. Okay, go back over it with the pine green and darken those up a little bit more. Oh, forget to do this one down here. All 
Okay, there we got those leaves. So they'll match the ones up there at the top. And if you want, you, you know, you can do these leaves any way you want. You can bring in a little more down the center there and just bring it out a little bit on both sides. Alright, um, so we have them here, here, and here. We have more leaves we're going to do in a different color. We have the ivy leaves we can do in a different color. I'm going to make this leaf here look a little more like a sage leaf. So we're going to use the earth green here. I'm giving it a little dimension by variegating it. So <laughs> you don't have to do that either. <laughs> it's just something I like to do. And then this leaf. pressed really hard. If the leaf has got a little wrinkle here and then it comes out and wrinkles again. So that's where I put the down shadow of it in the down part. Then when it starts to come up that'll be the lightest part and I just put a very light coat on that section. So it looks like the leaf is a little crinkled. And if it's in the pot, it probably is a little darker down in here. Bring the line up to the tip. A little darker under where the leaf curls over. Okay. That's that on those. And these leaves are a little different on this side too. We could bring that color over. It's also going to be in the ground. So maybe we'll do those in a different color. Let's see, what else can we do? I'm going to put a little in this bottle here. This is like a soda bottle. I don't know what kind of soda they would make, but the bottle is going to be a kind of a, a green color. <laughs> kind of soda you think nice drink. <laughs> no clue. <laughs> um, <clears throat> not sure what these little bottles are. One could be oil, one could be vinegar. So we're going to do this one in green. Maybe it's olive oil. Okay, so we'll have the green going through the page. Anything else that could have a little bit of this color in it? Should have something down here. Oh, well, we have these leaves. Q. 
keep that one over there. <clears throat> okay. Um, we have this color that's going to be all the way across up here and down here. It's the pine green in here. So that should be okay. We need to get a color for the ivy. Um, hold on. Okay, the ivy. What you kind of want to do when you're doing the ivy is the ones that are behind are going to be darker than the ones that are in front. So kind of go around and figure out which ones are behind and make those darker and then the ones in front a little lighter. I know the window's right here and there's going to be casting of some lightness on just the tips of some of these more so than the ones in the back. But we're going to find the ones in the back first. So like this little guy, we're going to darken him. This is a chrome oxide green I'm using. So we're just going to go around and darken him up, especially underneath this side where he is on this plant, and then lighten it towards this end. There should be a little branch that he hits on somewhere out here. This portion here is going to be under this one. So we'll make sure that's the darker portion. But it's on top of this one, so this one's lighter. And this one's just going to be green. <laughs> you can make the bottom a little darker because it needs to be light up here. So we're going to work our way up this way. This one's dark. This one's going to be darker on this side. A little darker over here. Because he's behind a couple. Then we're light on this one. To be darker on that side. But we have the light coming in, so keep that in mind to make that tip a little lighter. In fact, you can leave the tip white if you want. You can make a variegated ivy. So we're just going to take a little of that color out right there and just leave it kind of lighter there. Okay, this one's behind this guy, so he's going to be dark. These are not all shaped the same, so you don't have to worry about that. And this guy's going to be light on this side because that one's dark. <laughs> Get darker over here because we have brown on it. And then lighter out here. This is just a base coat. We're going to go back in and shade all these guys up. But we're just getting who's behind who here. This guy is dark back here. shape. So I'm just going to color in all this area here with the green and darken that. Okay, and make that light. This one can be dark there and light on the outside. Mm 
Okay. Let's see, I think. I think this is a little leaf. No, I can't do that. Leave him a little lighter. The guy behind him has to be darker. And he's in front of the window. and that one will stand out more. We'll go over here, this side, darken these guys. Hopefully you can see all this. I don't pay much attention up there on the camera, sorry. One's darker behind here. And then the rest of these guys are kind of on their own. Little guy. Littler guy. <laughs> okay, so that gives us that color, and we need to bring that color down here. So our berries and their leaves are going to get some of that. looks to be like that leaf so we'll have to color that in the same. We can add it into this leaf. Leaves just kind of go off the edge of the page there. Okay. Okay. I'm going to add just a little bit of it over here in the darkest areas of these leaves. All right. Yay, 
leaves. What I'm going to do is um, finish those off camera so we're not going to have to worry about those along with the floor. And then we'll do um, the bowls. We have a couple of bowls. So these two bowls will be done the same. Alright, before we do the bowls, <laughs> I'm going to finish off the ivy here, at least a couple of them. I brought in a drawing pencil, since we're using <laughs> fabric as well, we might as well throw in a Derwent color, right? This is wheat, and this is in the, the drawing set, and I think that that would go really nicely on the edge of these ivies. So I'm just going to set that in there. If you don't have the drawing set, which I don't know how many people do, but you can find uh, cream in any of your sets. Would probably do the same thing. I'm trying to think of what other color. I just wanted to see if these went or worked well with the polychromos. So you'll probably be seeing me do that a lot. <laughs> um, bringing in a Derwent drawing pencil to see if it will go well with the pencils that I'm using. It's a small set of pencils, but I love the colors in them. It just blends nicely with those. Okay, we had a little baby in here. It's kind of giving the ivy that uh, variegated ivy color, which I like. We'll do a little bit on this one and then go over it with the polychrome and see how that works. And there's ivy on this side. Oops, sorry. Get my hand on the wire there. Just blends over that really nice. Blend that in a little better because I didn't color these terribly well. Uh, was it the chrome? Okay, I'm going to turn the paper. And I'm going to bring out some veins in here too. These are way up on the edge, so not too much detail needed on those. Oh, but I like how these turned out. blends over it really nice.
You can put paints in them or not. It doesn't really matter. I um, kind of like these a little better than the ones I did over here, so we'll just erase some of that in there. And just leave them shaded. Sorry, I'm throwing the paper all over the place. It's slippery on this board, but I find it worked a little better with the um, polychromos on a harder surface than the mouse pad that I was coloring on. So I put a wood board under it. Kind of keeps me keeping the paper in the camera too, so if I'm not moving it off my desk area. So there we go. Okay, that's looking good. I like that color. <laughs> Helps blend that polychromo out too. Okay, let's see. Oh, um, why don't we try that down here? Put it in these uh, leaves too. Oh, oops. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, guess we could do a couple of cups. I don't know what color to do all this stuff yet. And I don't know if our little ducky here should be wood, but it probably should. So we'll just get the three colors we were using for wood before, which are the walnut and the, I don't know if that one was it, <laughs> the raw umber, and I believe it is the light yellow ochre. So we will just uh, do the little ducky in those colors. Beak. I think he goes all the way up here. I think that's another leaf I have to color in. Okay, then we'll go in with the raw umber.
Okay, then the walnut. Just gonna darken up the bottom a little more. And then go over it with the yellow ochre. neck. Hmm. I could make it a bow, <laughs> but I think it's probably just going to be a gray metal bow or a band on there like the um, barrel down below. So in with the lightest gray, darker gray, the black and then back in with the lightest there we go and over here somewhere oh, not that one I have this pen this is a uh, glaze black secure pen. And I'm just gonna make sure it works. And we're gonna go in the duckie's eye. Come on. There we go. It'll stand up a little bit and then you can see it because we colored over it. <laughs> you couldn't see it very well. I'll be doing that with the little mice too. Okay. I'm pretty sure this is a lengthy video. So what I'm going to do is stop it now. When we come back, I will have the floor all finished. All the leaves up here finished. Which is going to take me some time because those are the pieces. And then in part three, we will um, work on the little micees. So I will see you then. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now.